you being as authentic and genuine as you can be is going to set you aside from anyone else trying to mimic, copy, duplicate your brand. See, a lot of people in this world, Carmela, will be the type that will compete because they can't compare. So what's happening is they'll go out and they'll try to ruffle your feathers, get into your lane, bump into you because you got that nice Ferrari, right? They're going to try to make you feel some kind of way if you do own something worth value, even if they own it. You know, you look at some people with LLCs, they're not doing anything with them. They have nothing but a bunch of talk. They're, they're always doing something, but nothing ever comes to fruition. So with those type of people, they're the ones that will try to come in and sabotage what it is you're doing. They're going to give you a bad review on Facebook or Google or something like that. They're going to promise you things. You know, I have so many people promising me things that I'm going to volunteer, which volunteering, you know, I blame it on the pandemic. You know what I mean? Because the pandemic killed a lot of creativity. And people got a year into doing absolutely nothing. And what took place after that? They became stagnant. They weren't able to do anything outside of what society said we could do, which is sit at home, collect free money, do nothing with it, you know? Some people, they invested that money. Some people invested in themselves, into their brand, into their, because that was what the, the pandemic checks, I think, were supposed to all be about, you know? Taking care of you and your household and leveraging the playing field for those who messed up before. If you messed up before, wasn't able to get a checking account or a banking account or a routing number or whatever because the whole world was turning over into technological, you know, application. That's what was was all going on. So as long as you're in your lane and you're a beautiful Ferrari, that's all that matters. Have insurance and don't be upset. If someone accidentally bumps into you and says, oops, <laughs> because that's what it's all about. Getting you riled up, getting you feathered up, getting you um, frustrated to the point where uh, you give up. That's what it's about. You know, right, right. <laughs> yes, let me tell you. <laughs> Greetings and welcome to Chronicles of, of a Nonprofit, episode 85. Happy day, happy giving of thanks in every day's way. You know, every day is a day that we should give thanks, that we should, you know, take that moment of meditation time to bless and thank our ancestors and our elders for being who they are in our lives. This is episode 85, and today we're talking to a pre-recorded podcast that was already taken in a private consultation, and we're going to keep moving, so here we go. Let me tell you, let me tell you, I've had individuals come to me looking for something. You know, running a commercial building is all about keeping activities going, events going, um, opportunities for community. All that is important in my genre of entrepreneurship, right? So in this genre, there are certain things that make me say, yes, I would love to do that. That would be perfect. The vision is great. The idea is perfect. But the credentials are not. The um, style of character within the individual as an entrepreneur is not up to my standard. So when you see the 
Harvest is plenty, but laborers are few. Not too many people can validate that they can do what they do. So in order to run a legitimate organization as a nonprofit, we have to make sure we vet our people. We have to make sure we background check. No one's just going to come into a location without having the skill set necessary to work with our community. Because when that happens, it becomes chaotic. It really does. I've seen it happen in other locations. I've seen it happen in other places. So with that being said, you have to do the same. Credentialing is highly important and valuable in your industry. Working with individuals with autism, you know, that is very severe because it takes patience. It takes kindness. It takes, you know, long suffering. So with that, Carmilla, I feel that it is vital that you set the tone, you set the standard and the ethics and how your client base works with your client base. Your staff works with your client base. And that is going to put you aside and make you stand out. And doing the work now is going to prevent lawsuits. It's going to prevent uh, policies and procedure um, legality legalities and it's going to make you make the potential of what it is that you're visioning and your manifestation come to fruition for you. Now back to my situation, I have to say that you will also, I've seen people come in with great ideas to see if you'll bark. Sometimes I've had the greatest idea and I was so excited about it. And so people love to come in and put that excitement in your, your da- like dazzle it in your face, you know. But what we also learn is what is for us is for us. And in time, everything will reveal itself. I've had people wanting to start up beautiful programs, beautiful programs. But on the flip side, they also want to see if they can build leverage with me in some way to where I will end up needing them. And I, you know, I always wonder, well, why would, if I'm coming into an establishment wanting to project my passion, I'm going to have the funds in order to provide myself with the space. I'm going to have my certification and I'm going to have what it takes to do the job, right? (laughs) Mm -mm. Some people come in, they have these credentials. I tell them, bring your portfolio, bring your Rolodex, bring your, bring your project, bring your idea. But see, when you are used to manipulating your way, because others have always opened the door for you, You don't understand what it means when someone comes in correctly and says, this is how I want you to do it. You know, it's easy to see what someone else has and want it, but are you willing to put in the work? Are you willing to put in the work? And that's what I want you to focus on because you're doing a beautiful job. And you know what? It's going to pay off so fruitful because you're helping people help their family members, loved ones, and giving them that break. You know, our adult day service, um, I was in the process of wanting to build it back up. And I was under the assumption that it was going to run through a agency. Okay. But agency called, there's a new location. And what's going to happen is now I'm going to look for someone else because I want that particular individual to be in my eyesight. I want them to see, I want to see how they perform um, in group settings, in staffing. And so, you know, but we can always take those ideas and build and plug them into the people who, who is valuably loyal and on the team. 
and not just about, you know, see, because some people can, again, try to gain that leverage just to see what you can give them. But in this day and time, in, in entrepreneurship, it is not about what someone can come in and get. It's what can be done, leveraged, and balanced. And I want you to carry that along with your vibration when you're hiring your staff. You know, don't just always hire the one who has the most bubbly, you know, smile and the, and the quickest talk because, but not look at their credentials, not look at the character of the person. Because let me tell you, if a person consistently tells you they're going to do something and they never show up, believe them, they're not going to show up. <laughs> they're not going to show up because if you're doing things consistently, you are going to make it a point to let your word be your bond. And in business, to all entrepreneurs that may be listening um, to this when I put it on the podcast, and I thank you so much for allowing me to share this consultation conversation with the troops, with the entrepreneurs. I want you to know that if you are not practicing success on a regular basis, you're doing yourself an injustice. You may show up, you may have 20, 25, 30, 40 years of experience and something else, but if you're not doing it today, it's outdated. And you're not going to be able to compete with the newly educated individual coming out with the new laws, the new rules, the new guidelines, the new policies and procedures, the new aspects. You know, I'm getting ready to get into 2024 and my focus is um, selling events. Selling events is a great way to residualize your income in an area that, you know, people may not be able to even afford. Our commercial building, a lot of people can't even afford to be in the building. So with that being said, it costs more to, well, no, let's say it like this. It costs less to keep it closed and ready than it would if I just gave it away for whatever, whatever we want to do. So our event, uh, commercial event space is now going to be available to people coming from out of state, coming through for conferences, for uh, planning different activities, and that's on its way. And I don't share much because I can't share much because before I look up, it's going to be somewhere else. But what I want you to understand is that through this process, I am learning that working outside of the, the community in which you live is the most vital area of space that you can elevate. I have more community support outside of my local community with a brick and mortar building than I do with the building, with property, with, well, not with, yeah, even with property. But I do thank my local affiliates for those things that, you know, we have done together. Those few people that really believe in loyalty today. I appreciate and thank you. And for those who are coming in 2024, that's what the journey to the future is about for us. You know, making sure that we empower ourselves to know that you shine and she shines and he shines and they shine and we're all doing something to benefit our community. Not to compete, but to put it into a pot and stir it up and make a great seasoning for what it is we're trying to create for our community. Um, so yeah, keeping that in focus, keeping that thought there. I really, <laughs> I have discernment. And when I discern things, one minute I can be so excited about it and it can be something that's so important to me and then something shows up and says, nope, stop all 
production. Stop all projection. And the next thing you know, I don't need that service anymore. I thank you very much. However, I come back to it at a later date and something greater, something bigger, something stronger has emerged. And that's how you got to look at it. You got to look at the struggles of highs and lows and how character and business design is, how people will prevent individuals from coming to your establishment because of the fact that they want clientele. They have bigger advertisement. They have all this stuff, but you don't know what's going on inside. So don't compare yourself with it and just know that what is yours is going to always be yours. And you will shine victoriously if you continue to keep doing the next right thing. And half the time, what you thought was the thing, the very thing that you were supposed to be doing, and you figure, oh, I'm failing because this isn't happening. I'm I'm not um, projecting the way this is. See, people expect projections to be the success driver. But what happens is if you put your hands in the fire and you have many irons in the fire, each iron is going to burn with passion. You burn each iron with passion. And before you know it, you're pushed into another pathway. I never would have thought that property, leasing, renting, and selling was going to be where I would go after moving into the concept of community. I never would have thought feeding programs would be there moving into the concept of community. I never thought business development, (laughs) incorporating organizations and strategic planning would have been a part of what I would be doing, working with community, just feeding people. Never would have thought. So what I say to you is when you see your project on the other side of town, when you see your project down the street, when you see your grant denied and you see someone else doing it right in your local community. I used to make people sign non-compete forms. Mm Mm-hmm. That protected my concepts because I'm very creative and I'm always everywhere. And that is what, and I've always been that way. And that's why things come to me easier. But then I learned to see the leadership in people I never even touched. You have that quality, Carmela, to see the leadership of people that you've never touched, watch you so specifically that they can flourish and thrive. Now that's pure, true leadership. They may never give you the accolades. They may never give you the pat on the back. They may never give you that. You're not to expect that. You're to expect that, oh, I see the collaboration. I see. I see what happens here. When you see the color blue together, and then you see the color green together with uh, a group of green crayons. Let's use crayons. You see blue, green, orange, purple. Okay. When you see blue, red, and, and blue, red, and green together, you know that that's a pattern of behavior. When you see it together two and three and four and five times, You start to pull them together and organize them for yourself. And then hindsight and discernment is going to take you back and show you exactly what happened, when it happened, and who played a role in it because you see tremendously if you pay attention to how you meet people. There's a a flow of, of, ah, let me see. There, yes, yes, there you go. There is a pattern. <laughs> There's a pattern. And if you follow the pattern, you'll see the trail. And when you see the trail, you'll know specifically what took place. 
And there are people in our lives that can't even come back into our lives because they came under false pretenses. They're not even allowed to be a part of life, no matter how much we miss them, no matter how much we love and care about them. There's always that discerning factor that we are unequally yoked and we must stay separate but equal. So I hope this helped you. I hope this chronicles gave you the support because we all go through it. We all go through the challenge of how people move. And in this movement, you're going to get some serious disloyalties. You're going to get some serious, let me pick your brain so I can make my situation better without paying you. But what they don't understand is they're going to pay, whether they pay you up front or pay afterwards. Everything in this life is worth the passion that it takes. And with every passion, you have to pay something. You have to pay homage. You have to pay accolade in some form or fashion. You know? One final thing. I always give credit to every one of my mentors. Even those mentors that used me to get what they needed from me. And I thought that I was getting, and we were balanced, that I was just, you know, an employee working, to, but I was growing and learning. So every mentor who has ever touched my life, we want to give thanks, Carmela. We want to give thanks. You know why? Because eventually you're going to see them, whether you see them going up the ladder, and then there's going to be times as an entrepreneur, we're going to fall off that ladder. So the same people that we're seeing going up, be kind, be nice, be generous, be a blessing to, no matter if they are disloyal or not, but the first time that they are, then you cut the tie. But these same people may be the very ones coming down. I'm going to leave this final thing. I was watching a Country Wayne episode and uh, one of the characters in the skit, Mike, he's incarcerated for something that, you know, his brother did. His brother served eight years for him years, years, years ago. That's why I say karma comes back no matter what. So brother serves eight years and then gets out, loses eight years of his son's life, but he rekindles his relationship. So his brother then uses his truck that you know, he purchases his brother's truck and something was dirty in the truck. So he goes to jail and he's innocent. So I can't wait to see what takes place in his story versus his brother's. Because um, again, there in the episode yesterday, it was about being there innocent for a reason because God wants to use us for something bigger. So again, it goes back to the process of disciplining oneself never to take something without giving something in return. You never take anything in this life that you don't give back to make better than before you met it. Every individual that touches my eyesight, my life, my voice, under the sound of my voice, I don't want to leave them without giving them the pure blessing of something better, some opportunity. Because without that, without opportunity, we are depressed. There's nothing. But with an opportunity, with some hope, and it doesn't cost anything to give a good, kind, nice, you know, blessing towards someone. With that opportunity, you've done your part. Whether they take it or they leave it, whether they throw it back at you, whatever they did, that has nothing to do with you. It has more to do with your leadership character. So I want you to hold on to that. Be consistent, Carmela. Be on time. Be the best you you can be rocking in the shoes you're wearing because, girl, you doing it. You wearing the damn things. And it takes a lot of effort to do that. So stay blessed.
and we'll see you next time.